Good Thursday afternoon. I'm Charity Menifee, Director of Communicable and Environmental Disease and Emergency Preparedness here at Knox County Health Department. Our moment of gratitude today is de dedicated to the businesses in our community. We know these past several months have been extremely hard, both personally and professionally, and we are thankful for the wonderful businesses who have taken steps to ensure that their staff and their patrons are kept safe. We know taking these steps likely haven't been easy, but following the guidance and adapting to the situation um, is making us, and you are making truly a difference in our community by doing that. Our real life example of putting the five core actions into play is visiting extended family or friends. This is something you may be planning to do over the Labor Day weekend next weekend. First and foremost, if you are sick, you absolutely should stay home. Likewise, if you feel fine, but you may have been exposed to someone with COVID-19, you also absolutely need to stay home. Before you arrive, ask your family or friends if the gathering can be held outside. If so, bring a couple of lawn chairs so you can ensure you will be properly spaced out at least six feet away from others there. If there will be kids present, suggest some activities where kids can play, but also can be physically distant from each other. Activities like chalk art or frisbee are great ideas that don't require close contact. If the group has to move inside to eat or because of inclement weather, make sure you are wearing your mask if six feet of distance can't be maintained. Oftentimes, we know that gatherings in a house don't lend themselves to a distance of six feet apart, so it's best to just keep the mask on at all times. When you're eating or drinking, you of course can take off your mask, but be sure households are seated at least six feet apart while you're doing so. There are just a few simple, these are just a few simple things you can do in order to stay safe while also going about your life and doing the things you love. As a reminder, we are testing today at the Hall Senior Center on Crippen Road from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Just like our standard testing at the Jacob Building, anyone is welcome to come and get tested. We will continue our testing at the same time, or same time and place tomorrow. Next week, we will return testing to the Jacob Building Tuesday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Now we'll move into the local situation. We have 99 new confirmed cases since yesterday's report, giving us 6,162 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Knox County, Knox County since March. Additionally, we have 227 probable cases. 4,202 of our cases have recovered, giving us 2,131 active cases. 258 individuals have been hospitalized at some point in their illness, and 38 Knox County residents are currently hospitalized. And unfortunately, we have one additional death related to COVID-19, bringing our total to 56. And now we'll transition to the benchmarks. As a reminder, for the majority of our benchmarks, what we want to see is no three-day statistically significant shifts within a two-week time period. Every day we look back at the previous two weeks, that's what a rolling average is. Overall, what we mean by this is we are trying to see are things getting better, staying the same, or getting worse? And if so, how much better or worse and at what rate? We will now pull up the data, and as a reminder, all of this data that we're going to talk about is on our website. You can find it at covid.knoxcountytn.gov slash case dash count. Moving to the first benchmark, sustained reduction or stability of new cases for 14 days. To illustrate this benchmark, we have a bar graph that shows previous cases, new cases, and the growth rate over time. We did see three flags during this period, but not on consecutive days. And this is not unexpected when we see both high and low volume days like we've been seeing. Because of this, we are representing this benchmark as green. We are encouraged by the lower volume of new cases and hope to see it turn, turn into a complete downward trend. But in order for this to happen, everyone needs to follow the five core actions everywhere you go. We can't let off on that. Our second benchmark, community-wide sustained and increased diagnostic testing with consistent or decreased test result reporting turnaround time. For this benchmark, we are utilizing two bar graphs, one that shows a sample of the tests conducted for Knox County residents and another for average time between, 
specimen collection, and lab report data. For the data we can see, the trends are heading in the right direction. A few flags were detected, but not on consecutive days. <clears throat> and the number of tests conducted continues to trend consistently. And likewise, the lab turnaround time in our community also remains consistent. This is encouraging and why we are representing this benchmark is green. Our third benchmark, sustained or increased public health capability. For this benchmark, we aim to initiate investigations for new cases within 24 hours and close contacts within 48 hours. Since March, we have initiated investigations within 24 hours for 99.6% of our cases. Because of this, our benchmark continues to be represented as green. Two weeks ago, I did mention that we spent some, or we sent some of our cases to Tennessee Department of Health to be interviewed for capacity reasons in order to allow some of our staff to return to other critical public health practices. It's important to note that there are certain criteria for cases that TDH can assist with, including folks that are at low risk for complications and those that are not involved in any clusters. Of those cases that we sent to the state, for less than half a percent of our total cases, we cannot confirm the investigation was started within 24 hours. This is why we are stating that we have initiated investigations for 99.6% of cases. Doesn't mean they weren't, it just means we couldn't confirm it. As of two weeks ago, we have since returned to taking over the, all of the case investigation components and of the response and no longer send any cases to D TDH to be interviewed. With our current team, we've realized that we have the capability of handling our current caseload. We, we will of course continue to evaluate this in the future and make any appropriate changes if our situation evolves. Our fourth benchmark. Healthcare system capabilities remain with current and forecasted surge capacity. These graphs show the available availability of regional hospital beds, ICU beds, and ventilators from our hospital partners. It also shows the additional surge capacity for these categories, as well as the COVID positive patients and the patients with pending test results in the hospital. These data are gathered from information hospitals put into the Tennessee Healthcare Resource Tracking System, or HERTS. It may reflect Knox County, East Region, or patients from other jurisdictions. For this benchmark, the traffic light is yellow. We did experience a day of significantly increased um, increases regarding positive patients, but there were no flags noted for ICU patients or ventilated patients. After speaking with our hospital partners, they stated that the benchmark should be represented as yellow. The hospital systems continue to meet regularly, assess the situation, and plan their response together. As always, decisions regarding how to classify this benchmark as green, yellow, or red are made in concert with our hospital partners, as well as taking all of the data into consideration. And our fifth, fifth benchmark, sustained or decreased COVID-19 related death rate for identified positive or probable cases. For this benchmark, we use a graph that shows not recorded deaths of Knox County residents by date of death. Over the past two weeks, we have seen six deaths during this reporting period which is down from the 11 re-reported during our last update. This benchmark is represented as green. And I'll now open it up for questions. All right, you can go ahead and put your questions into the chat feature. All right, the first question we have is from Brian Hornback. Would Knox County Commission appointing a citizen onto the Board of Health be a good move? Um, you know, we always value citizen input, and um, if that's what happens, um, we will be happy to have them join. Um, I'm not on the board, but I'm sure they will be as well, um, and, and hear what they have to say. From Megan with WBLT, what message would you send to college students or other young people who are considering attending a large gathering? Um, really want you to think about doing that, and um, is it worth it? Um, we want to be able to continue to move forward um, and see the progress that we're making. And um, these large gatherings where folks aren't able to social distance when they're not wearing masks um, are really just prime events for us to have um, a spread of this disease that will continue to spread throughout the community. Um, it can impact schools, it can impact the university's operations, all of those things. So really think about that. And if you are going to attend, just like we talked about today, um, make sure you're doing it in a safe way so that you're, um, it's not too crowded, that you're able to socially distance from each other and that you're wearing your mask the whole time you're there. From Claire with WUOT, can you give an update on how the 7.1 million in grant funding has been spent? 
how much of this funds has already been allocated and how much is in KCHD reserves? I don't have the exact numbers um, right now, but what it's being spent on, I can tell you. Um, we have hired several folks that are um, assisting with our contact tracing efforts, gone through all of our training and um, are beginning to do that work. And we are also hiring folks that have come on board to start helping with our testing efforts. That's um, one of the newer things we've just started. Um, and so everything from data entry to um, administering the test and then also data entry on the, um, the investigation side as well, or just some of most of actually the activities that happen. From Paul with WBIR, UT says Knox County contact tracers are asking everyone if they belong to the university. Can you confirm that? It is on our um, screening form. We added that um, along with Knox County Schools and others just because of the size and the scope and that we have other people helping with contact tracing with those folks. Um, so it's on our supplemental form um, that we use locally to gather extra information that we need for our local investigations. And Paul, I believe that answers your follow-up question. Um, they're doing the same for the schools. Um, from Vincent with the Sentinel. Uh, yesterday, the CDC recommendations regarding asymptomatic testing were changed pretty drastically. Medical experts and our own Board of Health members seem pretty confused by the shift. Are you following the new guidance? Um, at this time, we're still following the guidance that we have been following, which is um, uh, A, uh, making sure that people who are symptomatic get tested. We recommend that contacts do get tested um, still at this time. Um, and then um, anybody else that wants to get tested can continue to get tested with us. Um, we're waiting on further guidance from Tennessee Department of Health to see how we're going to move forward um, it, with what the CDC changes have been. But at this point in time, nothing's changed for us. From Laura with WATE, uh, she says this is a question from a viewer. I watch the data each day for the Knox County COVID cases. Their graph showing the new cases each day includes a trend line. I've never seen a trend line that is straight and never seen one continue to go up when cases have been going down for weeks now. Can you ask the health department what is going on there? Um, the trend line, and I cannot tell you the formula that's used, but it's a standard formula to develop a trend line with the type of data that we have. Um, we could try, try to get what that is out there, um, but that trend is looking at the trend the whole time, um, not at the recent 14 day period. So I wanna make sure that that's clear as well. Um, but we've heard your feedback and we'll take it into consideration. From Vincent with the Sentinel, considering what we know about asymptomatic and false negative tests, what do you think this shift in testing policy will mean for controlling the spread of COVID-19? Um, you know, there, there's obviously a very valid concern and you've heard about that in the media with um, not recommending uh, asymptomatic people get tested because of the known asymptomatic spread. Um, so I think that um, let's let the dust settle a little bit and, um, and see where the recommendations end up for us locally um, and with CDC as well after now that they've heard a lot of this feedback. Um, we do want to encourage people that especially people who have been in contact or concerned in any way, shape, or form, um, we still do have testing available and want to encourage people to continue to get tested at this time. From Laura with WATE, can you provide more information on the new death reported? Um, it was a 70-year-old woman. From Paul with WBIR, have we turned a corner yet with cases? Are we on the upswing? Why or why not? Um, you know, I think we've been seeing um, good signs um, and positive um, case count or um, data in our case counts and our hospitalizations. Um, and actually, most of our metrics are, are looking um, good. Uh, I don't think we've been seeing this long enough to determine if it's a full trend yet, um, if it's a corner that's been turned. Um, I also um, want to mention, it's, it's very encouraging, and, and I think that we need people to continue doing what they're doing and following all the five core actions and, and don't let off on that right now because we have some really big things that are going on that can impact our community um, that are where spread can happen. And so we have all these kids going back to school. We have the universities back in session. We have a large holiday um, weekend coming up with Labor Day holiday and previously with Memorial Day and Fourth of July, we saw jump in cases right after those. And so all of that's concerning for us. So we're cautiously optimistic, um, but want people to continue to keep their foot on the gas and following the five core actions um, where, whenever they're out and about. From Claire with WUOT, we have seen more resources in other languages recently. Mm -hmm. Did KCHD pay community members or local nonprofits for their assistance and translation services, or was it all on a volunteer basis? Um, I was not involved in that piece of it, so we'll have to follow up and get back to you, Claire, with that answer. From 
Paul with WBIR, if you're a close contact in quarantine, can you leave your residence if you need groceries or something? Why or why not? Um, we really ask that you don't, and there's um, there's lots of options that you can have. So you could leave and go pick up groceries through, um, you know, uh, curbside pickup and have them put them in the trunk of your car and, and stay out of contact with folks. Um, but then we can also help if you don't have any other options. We also have people that will get a neighbor or a friend or a family member, bring them groceries, that type of thing. Um, but we the, the, the point of staying in quarantine is to stay away from everybody that you can possibly stay away from during the period where you could be um, becoming ill with this virus and transmit it to others. So there's that two week, that 14 day incubation period um, that we really want to keep everybody away um, from others to try to prevent the spread. So if somebody's having issues with their grocery, getting groceries while they're in quarantine, they can reach back out and, and we'll try to give them suggestions and we have ability to um, and connections in the community to help out when needed. Um, Brian Hornback, have you seen or know of anyone that has been reinfected after three months with a new COVID infection? Um, we haven't had any confirmed cases um, of reinfection um, at this point in time. Um, we have had um, a very small number um, of people, actually maybe one or two, that has um, potentially or has a new infection showing up um, after three months. And so that's being discussed at the state level. Um, to be on the safe side, we will ask if it's been longer than three months, and this is the guidance across the state, to ask those people to, um, to isolate again and quarantine their contacts, to be on the, on the safe side there. Um, but there's still so much newness with this and um, all of the uh, science is still out there. So the actual reclassification of a reinfection hasn't really occurred yet. So we haven't had like where it was a genetically different strain that you probably saw in the news that happened um, in another country um, at this point uh, in Knoxville. Um, from Vincent with the Sentinel, I believe a follow-up from the previous question. Mm -hmm. um, I think he says, I think the problem with the trend line is that it is a trend line and not an indicator of the moving average. And he's just saying that as an FYI. Oh, thank you, Vincent. That's a good point, actually. And then his question is, if the state changes their testing criteria to match the CDC, is the KCHD obligated to follow those changes? Um, we're not, um, but we do generally try to follow as much as we absolutely can what Tennessee Department of Health is recommending. Because if you remember, or you think about it, we're in a donut hole surrounded by a lot of different counties that all do follow um, Tennessee Department of Health guidance. So when things are drastically different, um, it can be very confusing for people who might live in one county and work in another county um, and that kind of thing. So um, we don't have to, but we tend to try to do so. Um, and we'll see how things play, play out with um, this one when we hear more guidance from them. From Paul with WBIR, new controversial CDC guidance suggested asymptomatic testing is not necessary. Is KCHD changing its testing protocol or recommendations? Yeah, I think I've addressed that, but if you need something more, um, Paul, right now we're still doing the same thing um, until we get uh, some more guidance from Tennessee Department of Health. Also from Paul with WBIR, public health leaders say the new guidelines are not grounded in medical fact. Um, his first question is, what are the facts regarding asymptomatic testing and transmission? Um, well, there's there's a lot of evidence right now that says that there can absolutely be asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic um, transmission of this disease. Um, and so um, I think that's where the concerns that you're hearing from many in the medical and public health community about the, the new guidance um, plays out. It's also a little bit confusing um, in that in one place on the new CDC release guidance on one of their documents, it says that contacts should get tested and um, it should be followed up. And in another place, it recommends that they don't necessarily Necessarily need to, and then the asymptomatic piece is in there as well. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll have some more clarification on all of that in the near future. Uh, his second follow-up question is, is KCHD concerned CDC guidance may be politicized and changes not made with the public's health interest in mind? You know, I really can't comment on how CDC's um, decisions are being made and um, how that's being um, decided there and pushed out to the public. Um, I can just say that we are trying to look at it and um, make the best recommendations we can for our community, again, in coordination with what Tennessee Department of Health is saying, given um, that we're surrounded with counties that are falling under their guidance. From Megan with WBLT, 
As cooler weather approaches and people will be spending more time indoors, what new considerations should people take in preventing the spread of the virus? Again, really focusing on those five core actions. And, um, you know, when you're indoors, making sure you're staying that distance apart, that that distance, the socially distance piece is very, very important. Um, and, you know, six feet is the minimum. So if you can comfortably keep more than that, do that as well. Um, make sure you're washing your hands frequently. You're not, you know, all of the five core actions that you're not going if you're sick or you've been asked to stay home um, and that you're frequently disinfecting surfaces, especially when people are in more um, and in contact with surfaces more. All right. Any other questions, please go ahead and submit them now. Uh, from Vincent with a Sentinel, if more evidence emerges that this is a political change and not a scientific one, will KCHD continue to follow the available scientific consensus? You know, abs well, I have to talk to Dr. Buchanan and our leadership here and the Board of Health, who makes a lot of our recommendations as well. Um, but we always do try to follow the, the science and the data, and we will continue to do so. All right. Any other questions? Please go ahead and type them in now. All right, not seeing any other questions. So thank you all for your time and we will see you again on Tuesday of next week at 1230. Have a good rest of your day and a good weekend.